This is one of those classes of HSC questions where, like one of the trickiest things about the HSC is that because you know everything by that point, sorry, let me start again. Because you've been taught everything by that point, um, we can ask questions about anything. And so it's not like, oh, this is an exercise and the title is um, using the product rule in differentiating a thing. So everything's gonna be using that. Part of the problem is, I, you've got to work out what the thing is. Now, helpfully, the question itself gives you, it throws at you over and over again this word. They give you remainders, they ask for remainders, so you know almost with complete certainty you're going to need the remainder theorem at some point. And it's been, you know, a few days since we used it properly, so that's why I've reset it up here on the board, okay? But importantly, in the question, they provide you two remainders. They say when you divide by x plus 1, they give you a remainder of... You've got it, right? Negative 11. Negative 11, thank you. And then when you divide, is it x minus 3? Yeah. Yep, oh, yeah. X, x minus 3, yep. You get a different remainder, it's 1, very good. Now, we can use both of these facts to unpack both of the parts of the question. So part 1 says, find the value of b, which is that very last bit along the end. Okay? Now, when you look at the, they've said p of x in a really weird way. They said p of x is equal to, and then I think if I've got my memory right here, they've got x minus 3, so the two factors that they mentioned. Then I think it says q of x, is that right? Mm -hmm. Now, q of x, um, coincidentally, p, uh, sorry, q comes after p and r comes after q, but p, q, and r brilliantly actually stand for specific things. p stands for, it's a polynomial. q stands for, when you divide something, what what's the answer called? It's called the quotient, right? You've got this quotient part, but then there's this extra bit hanging on here. Now I think, is it, is it a lots of x plus, plus one? Yeah. Plus one? And then there's a b hanging out, and that's what we're trying to find, right? Now this is very important, okay? When you can see the polynomials written in this form, this actually has a name. We called this guy, all the way back, we called it the division transformation. It says, if you divide some polynomial by something, Right? You'll get a quotient, and then what's this thing called here? This is the remainder. Okay? Now this is so important to note because if you have a look at part two of the question, this is the actual thing we are trying to find. That's like the, the real question, and part one is just kind of like a milestone along the way. Okay? So let's get to oops, I rubbed it out. Let's get to part one and actually use these two facts to get to B. Now I could use either of them, but one of them is easier to use. Which one do you think might be more helpful, being that the thing I'm trying to get at is B? What do you reckon, Gary? Um, hmm. So, I, you're actually both, Sarang and Gary, you're both actually saying the same thing, but from different angles. This is what you said, um, Sarang, x plus 1, but the way I use this with the remainder theorem is I'm going to evaluate p of a. What is p of a in this case? It'll be p of negative 1, right? So I'm going to say, if I evaluate this, this is me using the remainder theorem in this case. I know what remainder I'm supposed to get out. It should be negative 11. That's the answer I'm supposed to get, right? But I can actually do the substitution, like everywhere I saw an x, I can replace it with a negative 1. So let's go ahead and do that. P of negative 1 equals <clears throat> negative 1 plus 1. Zero. That's 0. So the second I write that, I actually don't really care about any of the other things in here. Because it'll be 0 times some other stuff. Just going to give you 0. So far, so good? So this whole thing is dealt with. What about this? What happens to this guy? A, uh, negative one. A times... Zero. Zero. So again, you're like, oh, that thing just sort of disappears. This is why this is the right choice. Plus B, hanging out in the end. So you got zeros and a B. This is the thing you really wanted, but you know what this e is equal to. You knew it from the remainder theorem. So B is just negative 11. Nailed it. So that was part one. That's all you had to do, but you had to know to use the remainder theorem in this particular way. Okay? Then part two continues. It says, okay, now that you know this, can you find out this whole thing here? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite it now that I know what b is. Uh, this is part two. So p of x equals x plus 1, x minus 3. Here's my quotient, which I have no idea what it is, but I actually don't need to know. And then here's my last little bit hanging on here, minus 11. Okay. Now I've so far already used 
this fact. So what's the other fact that I haven't used yet? Yeah, this one here. So to use this with the remainder theorem, I'm going to evaluate P of what? P of 3. There's the A value there, right? So I'm going to write down, therefore, P of 3 equals, and I'm going to do the same substitution I did earlier. And you're now starting to see why this was written in such a weird, awkward way. When you put in 3 into here, you get 4. But when you put 3 into here, you get... Zero. So you actually don't care what the rest of it is. It's all going to get multiplied by zero. Not so along the end here. I do have to worry about this. So you end up with the A's there. I'm going to try and find out what that is in a second. This becomes four. Thank you very much. Three plus one. And then that minus 11 is hanging out on the end. Okay. Now, thankfully, from the original question, I know what P of 3 is supposed to be equal to in the beginning. It's supposed to be equal to one. one. So I'm going to write one equals zero plus this stuff. So far so good? And now it's just, I can Wait, just tidy up the algebra. So the four from the front? The four from the front? Four A. Four, or this, this one here? Is that what you're talking about? Okay. So yeah, that four A is right there. Is that okay? Um, can someone tell me what to do? I'm going to add something to both sides. What am I going to add? 11 will do. Um, that'll make a 12 over here, but to make A the subject, I'm going to write the 12 over here. Right, so then we can divide through by 4, which gives A equals 3. Have I finished? No. No, but I'm so very close, right? The actual question says, what is the remainder when you divide through by all of this? So A is not the answer. B is not the answer. I need to sub in 3 into here, and I've already substituted minus 11 into there. Okay, so I would tie this up in a nice neat bow by saying, therefore, the remainder is, and then I'm going to substitute in, uh, three lots of x plus 1. That's what I, I know what a is now, right? Minus 11, but I, I can simplify that, can't I? It's not that hard. Uh, three lots of x, plus three. three minus 11. Uh, yeah. Minus, Minus nine, eight. eight. We got there in the end. Oh, sir, I did that. Ta da. Yes, you did. Yeah. But you didn't know that that was the right part. Yeah. Zachy. Line 1 equals 4a minus 11. Just make sure the left side of 1 comes from the remainder. Perfect. So that's exactly right. I can say from this fact here, there's kind of like, and I put it, probably should have drawn it out a little more carefully, there's sort of an invisible line going to here. I've used the remainder theorem. If you divide through by x minus 3, this is the remainder you get. So therefore, p of 3 equals that. Is that all right? So very, very helpfully noticed. Um, and then I just do algebra on the right-hand side. Are you happy?